Make your table alive with turbo strips. This is the subject that we want to discuss today. And we'll use Kanban board as an example. And in this board, we will show you, we'll start very simply with very basic setup in which we will just use basic Rails feature. We will use uh, the redirects, which will be visible very soon. Uh, the goal is to move the task between statuses, the tables with statuses between to do in progress and completed. And uh, later on, we will introduce some small change that will make the basic setup impossible to use anymore. And we'll show you how to deal with that using turbo streams that are very picky and that specifically just move one row between those three tables that in the Kanban board. Hi, Tomek. Hi, Wukash. Uh, yes, we will start with the <clears throat> high developer happiness um, approach <laughs> yeah uh, yeah uh, which i am not a fan of <laughs> yeah and the, then, yeah we had a long debate but i'm on the side where uh, i would say that if i did some startup or i would just make some mvp i would go with this approach because i feel that if you are confident with rails and you're fluent with rails this can be faster and maybe for the mvp it will not block you uh, with the test and so on and so forth. But as you will see, it can, it can, uh, you can hit the wall at a certain time with this approach. All right, but maybe let's see what this page can do, Tomek. Can you guide us through it? Yeah, so uh, basically we have the three tables, right? And we can move tasks from one to another and by clicking the, the button, right? And if you click, for example, start button here, <clears throat> you can see that there was a, um, a request to the backend where we uh, change the status of the project right from started to in progress mm -hmm. and if you take a look on the response you got actually the whole html uh, page right yeah so so we got a response with all uh, the entire html page uh, you should uh, see that in just a second but from the user perspective the full reload wasn't necessary. So that's good. We are using Rails with Turbo. That's what is expected. Yeah. Uh, so it goes here. <clears throat> For sure we will. Oh, okay. There are three of them, right? But uh, Yeah, but yeah. that's probably this one. Yeah. Or this one. <laughs> Not the other one. Right. Um, so, and of course, uh, you can see it jumps from the um, in-between. It's not ordered, that's why, um, that's why it jumps in the random places. But uh, yeah, that, that's, uh, that's what happens in the very basic setup. So the full HTML page is produced. Let's take a look at the code, how it looks like in the code, how you can use the, those turbo streams. It looks very much like a regular Rails application, right? With the server-side rendering, we are not using any uh, any JavaScript besides for the one from the framework to actually achieve this goal, we're only using plain uh, MVC setup. Yeah, probably that's why uh, it is uh, like uh, popular, maybe because you don't have to do anything, right? If you had like older, <coughs> even older um, race application, you don't have to change anything in the in the controllers <coughs> so mm -hmm. because you just have the redirect. Yeah, here. exactly. So what where we do you here, do, where we you, also you know, respond oh, with sorry. the whole uh, whole HTML uh, to the user. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah, and before we redirect, we also update the status because that's the goal of this endpoint, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that this is the basic setup. Um, nothing interesting in the controller. Let's take a look at the HTML. All right, and this is how we populate this page with the three different, pro I mean, with the tables that each of them has the different state um, of, the, um, of the task, which is filtered by the where statement. So like nothing interesting here, really simple page, and it works fine. And as I said, I would probably start with this approach, but later on, we may run into an issue, right? Yeah. The, the, yeah, uh, maybe because I, I'm not, uh, I don't recall, sorry, <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, whether we, we actually mentioned that uh, we we don't do the the reload of the page, right? We just just 
some pieces of the page are uh, changed here, right? Mm -hmm. When we download the, <clears throat> the HTML, we uh, replace the old HTML with the new HTML, but you don't uh, have any calls for the uh, resources <clears throat> yeah. uh, in this approach, right? Um, but as you mentioned, it can uh, produce later on some issues um, because you still have to like render the whole page which can take more and more time um, later on. Um, and maybe you should not do it, but just focus on some small pieces of the page, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, maybe let's uh, let's show what would happen if this Kanban part, this Kanban endpoint would be a little bit slower. To simulate that, we'll add some sleep. Okay, and now if we click the start, as you can see, it's not really a good user experience. So, and this is, I think this is a very common case that we start with the page that is really simple. And then when the uh, business is growing, when the app is leaving for quite some time, we keep adding new features to that page, which eventually makes the page uh, slower because the index page loads more and more data and we end up with something like this. And then when we would just keep with the simple redirect, when we want to change the status of the projects um, of simple of the of the project, then it's actually problematic because the user experience. Well, I'm not gonna fool you. It just sucks, right? It takes five seconds to to move one task from the one uh, table to another. That's not really good. So what we can do about that? Uh, <clears throat> we can actually introduce. Uh, Turbo frames, where we just will change specific pieces of the page, right? And that's mm -hmm. something that we usually do in projects. Uh, okay, so the new new version is check out. Uh, let's put a slip here for a moment, so you will see that the page itself it loads with some delay, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. so long. I would already close it as a user, go do something else. Yes, right. <laughs> but, <laughs> then, but then we have those small changes that we've done here. And when you click the start button, look at it. So here, what we've done here, we can see that there's action remove. <clears throat> so, the, uh, so the frame with the row of that project was removed from that table. But then we did the prepend on this table, the whole table, and we and the the project um, is here now, right? You see? Yeah. So just remo nice. remove from one and move to uh, to the other, and uh, there is way less. The the response is very concise. It's very small. We don't need to re-render all the HTML. You can see that sleep. Uh, five seconds is still here, but it doesn't influence us in any way, right? If someone would do the HTML request, uh, we would have to add the uh, respond format of HTML. They would still get this redirect, which would be really slow. But with this approach, uh, you can precisely just change what you want to change and then just leave the rest. And we, that's, that's basically hmm? our default approach, right? We, we Why? go with, with this one because we just change uh, specific uh, pieces of, of the page and yeah, um, yeah. <clears throat> but it also has to do uh, with the projects that we work with right in uh, we mostly we specialize in legacy systems and in legacy systems the index page usually loads more or less like the the one with the five seconds of sleep so it wouldn't be that easy to just redirect to it and reload the data in that way that's mm -hmm. why uh, we usually pref prefer this approach. Although the lev developer happiness is, I mean, I don't care, but for some it's a little bit lower. <laughs> uh, but for me, I really care about my user's happiness. I care about the developer. Uh, I, I care about the experience of the user and how fast the page can re-render, especially for a such small and simple things as status change. Yep. Okay. But can we see what is this ongoing project? Because uh, we would like to expand, uh, explain what is actually happening here. So um, maybe let's start with the uh, with the Kanban page. We'll come back into here. 
that's the other part, but in the Kanban page itself, mm -hmm. we have this, um, we have the tables, right? And I, uh, I also remember that my, me myself personally, I had some, um, I had some issues with the turbo tables because there's always this question: where should I put my turbo frame? And in this case, uh, if you could scroll a little bit down, Tomek, um, we. Uh, in this case, we put it into the table body because then we can um, easily add some new table rows to the table body. As you can see here, uh, you, we are just appending or prepending in this case the table rows, and uh, we are not using specifically the turbo frame tag because you don't need to do that. You can just simply use the ID. It has to be unique, of course, and. That's the first parameter of our prepend. And as you can see, the other parameter, it was the project, um, the DOM ID for project, which is the, uh, we're using the Rails helper here in the, uh, in the HTML. And this gives us this possibility to specifically remove this one row and then um, add it in the other place. And we add it in the other place by using the partial, right? Which is open on the top. Yeah, and then this partial, as you can see, it's basically the same structure as in the table. We could probably reuse it in the table, although it has some consequences. We'll not talk about that uh, today. Uh, long story short, it can slow down your overall performance if you use the par partials too much. That's our late, uh, latest experience, <laughs> right, Tomek? Yeah. And that's pretty significant. Uh, should make a piece of talk about that. Another promise. Maybe it will be fulfilled at some day. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> That's basically it. That's the table row. It's uh, basically the same that you would see in the table uh, in the Kanban. So once again, what it does, it removes the ID uh, from the uh, previous one. I mean, there's only one ID of this project, right? It's unique. So we can just call turbo stream remove. Uh, if you could go back to the controller. Yeah, we just call the turbo stream remove in line 34. And then we prepend, actually first we prepend the uh, two ongoing projects, we prepare, prepend just one another ongoing project uh, with the locals uh, because that's, uh, that's more um, explicit. And basically that's it. That's all you need to get this experience. Uh, sometimes people have issues with this um, turbo stream and rendering many of the turbo streams. As you can see, we just use simple array, comma separated. There is no magic. If you would need to do this uh, to add some um, records into that array or some some objects into that array uh, conditionally you could just move it uh, up as a variable and then conditionally just uh, push something to that array and that's it that's very simple so just to sum it up uh, today um, we prefer this uh, way of this approach of working with uh, turbo frames where we just change replace the specific part uh, parts of the of the page instead of uh, sending back the whole html um, to be honest uh, for me when lukas uh, was showing me the the first approach i was asking him to <laughs> to find the source of uh, of um, of the of his knowledge about how why people sometimes do the, the redirect because i it was like um it was no clear to me why uh, why one should do it um, with, with the redirect and don't, uh, sending back the whole HTML uh, page even though you want to replace just like one or two rows, <clears throat> small sections on, on the page. Uh, but actually we found out that it's quite popular approach, right? Because then you probably have like some kind of backward compatibility where you don't have to deal with uh, turbo streams at all, right? You just have redirects um, and it works without the page <coughs> reload. Um, without the page reload, it works uh, It works for you. But yeah, in the long term, I, I don't like this approach and I, I uh, prefer um, prefer the very specific changes on, on, on the page, very mm -hmm. precise changes, right? Yeah. And just uh, to add one more thing, talking about the developer happiness, that's really cool, that's really important. But for me, like the great improvement in my developer happiness is that I don't have to use 
any JavaScript like Angular, React, and so on and so forth. So I'm really happy that I can just use these Turbo Things and uh, Turbo Streams and just manipulate my uh, my HTML that way from the server side. And that's the big boost in the developer happiness. So uh, I'm okay to take this. Um, I'm okay to accept this consequence that it may be a little bit more work than the previous approach, but for the benefits that I get with the be with the good user experience, but also the better performance, sending less data over the wire, I'm still really happy with that. So, if you like this episode and there are some questions regarding that, please give us some comment. I mean, ask your question in the comment and uh, we'll be happy to respond. We are looking forward to make some more videos regarding Turbo and Turbo Streaming as this is the uh, thing that uh, we're big fans of and we are using that on the daily basis in one of the client's projects. So happy to share some knowledge. I think that's it, right? Yeah, that's it. All right, thanks for watching. Ciao. See ya, bye.